So today's recitation includes the 26th Jews of the Quran. And this Jews is made up of many different surahs, all of which have their own themes and their own topics. So I'm just going to choose one surah to discuss tonight. And that is one of my favorite surahs in the Quran, Surah Al-Hujarat. Surah Al-Hujarat, the 49th chapter of the Quran, is a short Medinan surah made up of just 18 verses. And another name that this surah was known by amongst the early Muslims was Surah Al-Akhlaq, the chapter of good character. Because in these 18 verses are the primary principles of good character. What we need to do in order to have the akhlaq and the adab, the character and the man mannerisms of a true Muslim. And this is something that often gets lost. You know, when we talk about Islam, uh, we tend to talk about the laws, we tend to talk about the beliefs, but we ignore, very often we ignore the character side of it, which is just as important. And so this entire surah focuses on what is good character. So from amongst the lessons in the surah, Number one, the surah begins by talking about our character with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, for the sahaba, this was something they had to practice with the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in person, where they had to lower their voice in front of him and be humble in front of him. For us, this should be our relationship with how we talk about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but also how we deal with the hadith with narrations about what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said or did, that we should also have good character when interacting with these sources of Islam as well. Then the surah goes on to discuss the importance of not following rumors and slander. Where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala tells us in the surah, O oh, you who believe, if a, if a person who is uh, of doubtful character brings you any information, verify it. Right? So the, the surah tells us to verify information. And in this day and age, the age of fake news it is so important that we verify information. Almost every day, we have the same story. Somebody forwards something on WhatsApp, somebody else says it's fake. Right? If we just verify it first, then we would avoid that. Then the surah goes on to talk about the importance of reconciling between Muslims who are fighting each other. That if two Muslims or two groups amongst the Muslims or two Muslim countries get into a war with each other or a fight with each other or anything like this, our job is to try and make peace between them. And these verses say that the Muslims are Ikhwatun, they are brothers. And so make peace between your brothers. And then there are two verses that highlight a list of prohibition in terms of what we say about each other. Right? So these two verses prohibit things that, we should, uh, the things that we should never say about each other or to each other. So from the things prohibited in these verses is do not use vulgar nicknames. Do not call people by nicknames that they find offensive. From the things mentioned in these verses is do not backbite each other. From the things mentioned in these verses is do not even think bad about others without a good reason. Do not be suspicious of others. Right? And do not spy on each other. Do not look into each other's faults. And this is something lots of people don't realize is a part of our religion. Our religion values privacy. It is haram to look into other people's private lives to try and find out what their secret sins are. This is something that's haram. You're not allowed to pry into somebody else's private life. To do so is itself a sin. Whatever somebody does in secret is between them and Allah. For somebody else to try and look into it is actually a sin. So in this surah, Allah tells us, do not think bad about each other, do not spy on each other, do not backbite each other. And in verse 13, the most famous verse of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemns racism and tribalism and all types of feeling superior to somebody else, saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us into different groups and nations so we can get to know each other. And that the only criteria for who is Better in the sight of Allah is one's piety. So if we had to follow the verses of the surah, we would be able to eliminate many of the problems in our communities. Because most of the community problems we deal with fall into one of the categories mentioned in the surah. Whether it's spreading false information, whether it's racism, whether it's elitism, or whether it's uh, backfighting, or whether it's spying on people, whether it's thinking bad about others, all of these things are the core causes of problems and fitna in society. And so this is why I highly recommend every Muslim family take the time to study the surah. It's only 18 verses. Study these 18 verses with their tafsir in details. Apply it to your lives and inshallah, then we'll be able to live better lives, more 
in line with the character and teachings of Islam and we'll be able to avoid many of the fights that occur in our communities. Before we end, a reminder to everyone in these last few nights, please make dua for the people of Palestine and for what is going on there. This is the time when duas are answered and we don't know whose dua may be answered. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist our brothers in Palestine and in China and anywhere else where Muslims are being oppressed. Subhanahu wa rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamu ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillah wa